So here's the question for today, and some of you will love this one. Is it a sin to get a tattoo? I myself don't have one yet. I am deathly afraid of needles. And so I find this question always very interesting. A great many young people have tattoos and a great many elderly people, older people often will look at them and say, you know, the Bible says that's a sin. So this is a great question because it allows us to get at how we use parts of the Bible like Leviticus in particular. And so, yes, indeed, the Bible does actually say that you should not mark your bodies and it says it. And I have a little cheat sheet here for this one in Leviticus 19.28. And so the way Pentecostals have been taught about the scripture, we believe it's, it's uh, the inspired word of God and if the Bible says it, we shall, should not do it. Now there's a challenge about using Leviticus this way, and some of you will be aware of this. We pull out a verse like 19.28, and we use it to tell people, you should not get a tattoo because the Bible says you shouldn't. Now, we view that as having a very high view of Scripture. We're going to live according to the Word of God, and we value the Word of God very highly. Well, what I'd like to get you to think about today is that, in fact, the way we use that verse in Leviticus is not very honoring of the Bible itself because we are ignoring many other verses in the same chapter. And that's a problem. For example, in 1919, just a few verses earlier, we're told that we can't plant a garden with mixed seeds. So in other words, all of you with your potatoes, your carrots, and your turnips in your gardens the summer together have violated that verse. That's a sin. We're also told in the same verse in 1919 that you can't wear clothing made out of more than one kind of material. So if you're right now listening to me in a polyester cotton blend, you're in violation of that verse. 1926 tells us not to eat anything with the blood still in it, which immediately eliminates all of our snared rabbits in Newfoundland. That becomes a sin, and we have done that for years. 1927 tells us, and you, you may have seen Orthodox Jews who don't trim the edges of their beard or their hair. The Bible specifically tells us not to trim the edges of our beards or our hair. And yet here I am, and many of you the same. 1928 mentions tattoos. 1932 tells us that when somebody elderly comes in, the present, comes in our presence, we are to rise in the presence of the elderly or the gray-haired, which means every time your grandfather or grandmother has entered the room and you have not risen out of respect, you have sinned according to 1932. And all of those examples are right in the same chapter with the verse on tattoos. So where does that leave us? Well, in the Old Testament, there are really three types of laws. There are civil laws for governing Israel. There are ceremonial laws for how things should be done in the temple and so on. And then there are moral laws that govern how humanity lives. The things concerning sacrifices and the temple and the things done for the preservation of national Israel, all of these types of laws Jesus says very clearly, I came to fulfill that. My life, death, and resurrection fulfills that part of the law. And a quick reading of Leviticus 19 would tell you that, that this is part of what he has fulfilled. We are now able to mix clothing and we are able to do some of these things because they're no longer required for our preservation. This is a little more than I can unpack right here. But these types of laws are designed to help Israel be distinct from her neighbors so her neighbors can see her as God's chosen people, but also just in terms of her health and safety and well-being. It's why laws are giving about sickness and menstruation and these types of things. But then there are moral laws in the Old Testament where, and the Ten Commandments would fall under these. These are things governing the heart and the human condition. All of the moral law of the Old Testament is repeated in the New. That's why we can say we can follow the Old Testament in terms of the Ten Commandments because all of this stuff gets picked up in the New because these are moral laws, they're eternal, and they're, destined, they're about the human condition and our hearts. So is it a sin for a Christian to get a tattoo? No, it's really not. And if you are going to enforce that verse, either in your own life or you're going to try to enforce it on anyone else, if you want to have a very high view of Scripture, 
you also have to enforce at least the rest of that chapter. And that includes mixed clothing, it includes snare of rabbits, it includes rising in the presence of the elderly, these types of things. And so if you're going to have a high view of scripture and be consistent, we're going to have to do more than just pull one verse out. We've done this with women's clothing. It's why women for years had to wear skirts because we found one verse where it said women should not wear men's clothing. And so men preached this and we did it with the one verse. In that case, within not very many verses, it also says, you know what? If your teenagers are rebellious and very saucy, you should take them to the town elders and stone them to death. And see, we never follow that either. So while I admire us for trying to have a very high view of Scripture, and I too want to live according to the Scriptures, if you truly want to have a high view of the Word of God, then we have to be very careful how we have been traditionally picking and choosing verses out of the Old Testament that were there for the preservation of God's chosen people, Israel, and just importing just those couple of verses into the present day. We're going to want to be a little more careful with God's Word than that. Thank you.